Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks on Roku Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. To subscribers who listen to uh, my picks for this weekend, I say congratulations. Eris Landy Lara delivered with a victory over Alfredo Angulo. Very rough and tumble fight, right? Um, Lara went down multiple times in the fight, but the superior boxing technique ruled the day. And Marcus Maidana delivered for us over Jose Cito Lopez in a fight in which he also went down. But here again, their punching power and ferocity, as well as, in my opinion, superior boxing technique, ruled the day. Now, um, I haven't seen all of those fights, so I'm not going to comment on them here. I do have a highlight video of both of those fights up on my YouTube channel page right now for those who want to take a look. Right? Let me just say, we talk about the ability to take a punch. Right? We admire guys who have great chins. But understand the human body can only take so much. Alfredo Angulo clearly was getting battered to the face the entire match. Right? He can take a punch with the best of them. He wasn't knocked unconscious. But of course, again, the human body can only take so much. It's not just the man's chin, right? It's the man's facial structure. And Gulo may have suffered, in fact, reports are that he did suffer a fractured orbital bone, which could, quite frankly, jeopardize his boxing career. The problem with fighters who don't rely on defense, who don't have defensive maneuvers, who think they can walk through your punches all day, is that they're at an acute risk of getting an injury like this. Understand a fractured orbital bone is the same injury that another strong chin fighter, Antonio Margarito, suffered, right? The fact that Angulo doesn't know how to roll with punches and walks through punches really ultimately stopped him in this fight. You don't have to get knocked out, right, physically, lose consciousness to lose a fight by knockout. Let's hope that Angulo's injury is not as bad as the initial reports are, right? He apparently realized that he was in severe trouble right away because as soon as he gets hit with the punch, he turns his back and starts walking away. When the referee stops the fight, there is no protest from Alfredo Angulo, right? If you look at the film, just count the clean shots that Arislandi Lara is landing up top on Angulo. We talk about rolling with punches. There's a safety reason for doing so. It's not just prevention of being knocked out. It's also for the fighter's safety. Angulo doesn't roll with punches. It cost him in that fight. Let's talk about a fight I did see. Adonis Stevenson's dethroning of Chad Dawson. Now, I made a few comments about the fight. I did not make a pre-fight video because this fight made me nervous, even though I had Chad Dawson on my top 10 pound for pound list, right? Top 10 list, it's really a top 15 list, but play along with me, right? This fight made me nervous for a host of reasons. Let's go over them, right? First, Adonis Stevenson has a reputation of being a puncher. Now, that's very important. When his opponent is coming off of a knockout loss, where he has hit the canvas multiple times. Make no mistake, Chad Dawson got battered by Andre Ward. Battered. Beaten up. Gamblers should always be cautious, always, in taking a guy who's just been beaten up and knocked out in his very next fight. I don't care who he's fighting, right? 
when he's fighting a puncher with a very high knockout percentage, like Adonis Stevenson, in Stevenson's home country, you're just asking for trouble. Another problem that had me on the sidelines for this fight is that Andre Ward battered Dawson with his left hand. Longtime viewers know that I personally consider Andre Ward to be a southpaw fighting out of an orthodox stance. An argument can be made if you look at films that Andre Ward's best punch is his left hand, right? Andre Ward was throwing his left hand over Chad Dawson's right guard. That might be a flaw with Chad Dawson. Well, keep in mind here, Dawson was fighting a southpaw in Adonis Stevenson. So problems that Dawson had with the left hand were going to be compounded because now he was dealing with the knockout puncher whose dominant hand, whose knockout hand, is his left hand. Right? Let me also point out, too, that Stevenson keeps his hands low. Now, I know for boxing purists, that's a big no-no. Right? If your hands are low, they aren't in a position to block punches up top. Right? People say, hey, you know, you want to have a hand up. You don't want to have your hand down around your waist. But Stevenson moves well and understand that having his hands low gives him the same advantage that it gives to Sergio Martinez. It's hard to figure out the angles. Right? Those very hard concussive punches are coming from low in the frame. There was a height dynamic in this fight. Chad Dawson's much taller than Adonis Stevenson. So to figure out where Stevenson's throwing the punches, Dawson already has to look down. Since Stevenson has his hands low, Dawson, who carries a guard with him, had to look down even further. Now counterpunchers have a hard time figuring out the angles early in fights. Forget Floyd Mayweather's last fight against Robert Guerrero. Mayweather typically is a slower starter, right? Think about Mayweather against Zab Judah, for example, right? A southpaw, right? Mayweather took a few rounds to figure out the angles. That's the same pattern that holds with Chad Dawson, who himself is a very good counterpuncher. So Dawson is in with a southpaw, right? Keep in mind, Dawson has a problem dealing with left hands up top. We know that from the Ward fight. And Dawson, early on, is trying to figure out the angles. And Stevenson really is hiding his hands. His hands aren't up here. Dawson can't watch his hand from start to finish. No, Stevenson has his hand down here. And Stevenson is mobile. So Stevenson's standing outside and stuff like that. His hand's down here. Well, you know what happened. Dawson, first round, doesn't know the angles, is trying to figure them out. Stevenson comes up top with a nice left cross. Dawson, who isn't that great at defending himself on that left side, up top, isn't prepared for the punch. In the post-fight interview, Dawson himself said that he didn't even see the punch, right? And of course, Dawson's chin might not be the best, right? He's coming off of a multiple knockdown loss. So Dawson gets drilled, hits the canvas, is out. Let me just say, in my opinion, he's lucky. Dawson now gets to live for another day. If you look at how he leans back when the referee comes over to talk with him, it's clear that Chad Dawson does not have his faculties, right? If I were advising Chad Dawson, I would tell Dawson to take some time off, right? Reacclimate himself with his trainer. Keep in mind, he switched trainers between his last fight and this fight. That's a red flag. I know he had Eddie Mustafa Muhammad as a trainer before, but there had to be a reason why he left Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, right, to go with Iceman Scully, 
a few fights back. So now he has to reacclimate himself with his trainer. In my opinion, he has to reacclimate himself with his weight class. Let's remember, he lost weight and fought Andre Ward at 168 pounds. This was simply asking too much. I believe when a fighter gets knocked out, he needs to take some time off. Then he needs to come back and he needs to, you know, have the training wheels on. To come back against a hard-hitting southpaw in a title match, I thought was a bit too ambitious. Chad Dawson has a lot of soul-searching to do. If I were him, I would not fight Adonis Stevenson again anytime soon. Dawson did look good, by the way, before getting knocked out. He's throwing his jab. He's pumping it. Stevenson has to be outside because Dawson is controlling the action in the middle of the ring. He did look good before the knockout. No one's going to remember that. All they're going to remember is Stevenson leaning forward, catching Dawson, and taking him out. Right? The fact that Dawson didn't continue, the referee stopped the fight, saved Dawson from really compounding the problem. Right? Dawson could have been severely hurt had this fight continued. Right? So Adonis Stevenson is now the light heavyweight champion. That opens the door to, as you can imagine, a lot of opponents. But in the short term, one of them should not be Chad Dawson. Dawson needs to be real with himself about the problems he has dealing with left hands to the side of the head. Right? As I've said before in this video too many times, take a look at that Andre Ward film, right? Dawson should not be fighting any left-hand dominant fighters or guys who throw very good left hooks up top in his next fight, right? This is the second consecutive fight where Chad Dawson has been stopped. He needs a righty who can't exploit that weakness in his next fight to get his confidence back. And he also needs to stop playing games with his weight. He needs to stay at light heavyweight. I don't care how good the purse is. No fights at 168. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And if I'm lucky enough to ever get a chance to watch the entire Arislandi Lara, Alfredo Angulo fight, or the Marcos Maidana, um, Jose Cito Lopez fight, I'll try to make uh, post-fight videos on those as well. Thanks for stopping by.